Welcome to the second video in this series on commerce of the 16 and 1700s. This one is on the Ottoman Empire and the Mughal Empire, two empires that we mentioned last time but didn't really get to talk about. So in 5a and 5b, we will describe the location and development of the Ottoman Empire, and we will describe India, including the Mughal Empire and coastal trade, by creating annotated maps detailing the role these nations played in the development of global commerce. Here's the big picture for the Ottomans. The Ottoman Empire emerged as a political and economic power following the conquest of Constantinople. Ottomans brought much of Muslim territory in Southwest Asia and North Africa under their rule. Here's how it all started out. You remember the Silk Road coming along here from China, ending up right here at the Mediterranean Sea? You've also got the Black Sea up here, which is where most trade then reached Europe from the Ottoman Empire. So coming along the Silk Road would hit the Ottoman Empire and then get up here into Europe. But before the Ottoman Empire even got to be a big thing, uh, there was just a tiny little group of people who lived right here in a place called Asia Minor. And the major empire in the area was called the Byzantine Empire. And they owned this place right here called Constantinople that sits right on this little spit of land that divides the Black Sea from this whole Mediterranean area. And the reason that was important is because they could control trade from the Black Sea down to the Mediterranean and the Silk Road trade. So Constantinople was a really rich city because they controlled all these trade routes. So then in 1451, uh, Constantinople was totally surrounded by the Ottoman Empire, which is in green here. So the Byzantines still held the city, but basically nothing else. And then by 1453, the Ottomans took Constantinople and renamed it Istanbul. By 1639, they'd expanded into an enormous empire that covered all this territory, including the Balkan Peninsula right here, Southwest Asia, which is also called the Middle East, and North Africa. And you see it's called Istanbul now. Same city, same control of the trade routes, just different name. So here are the advantages that the Ottomans had. These are the reasons they were able to take all that territory. The trade from Europe and Asia flowed through it, and they had specialized in coffee and ceramics, which is a, you know, uh, pottery, um, and that meant that they were able to trade these goods along these routes in particular. And the rulers of the Ottoman Empire used Islam to unify the people that they conquered and bring them into the empire, often in more peaceful ways. And they were very tolerant of other religions, which allowed them to bring in the many different versions of Islam and also the Christians and Jews and other religions that were living in the area. So here's the big picture for the Mughals. The descendants of the Mongols, the Muslim Mughal Mughal rulers, you can say it either way, established an empire in northern India, and this Mughal Empire traded with European nations. Uh, but much of the southern continent, uh, subcontinent of India remained independent and continued international trade on their own during this time period. So notice, Mughal is sometimes spelled Mughal, like it is on this map. This is India in 1605, right here. And the, the Mughals spread Islam into what is now Pakistan and India. And you can see that they covered all this. This is Pakistan up here. And then down into India... And they covered all the way down here, but southern India, you can see, are these other nations, all these other colors down in there. And then some really important achievements in art and architecture, like the Taj Mahal, which you can see is placed right here between these two major rivers. The Mughals, in green, take this whole northern zone. In fact, even push further down later in this time period. But the independent kingdoms in the south are trading with Europeans on their own, which we'll see in another map. The Indian textiles from southern India's trade post heavily influenced the British textile industry because Mughal designs and those southern Indian designs helped jumpstart the mechanization of textiles in Britain, as in it helped get Britain to the place where it could use machines to make those textiles like cloths and uh, cotton, and then they were able to jumpstart the Industrial Revolution, which we're not even going to talk about for a couple months, but it's going to be really cool when we get there. Here's the Taj Mahal, a picture of the Taj Mahal, built by Emperor Shah Jahan for his late wife, who had just died. And um, so it's a tomb for her, but it's beautiful. Look at the water and the trees. And it's this incredible and enormous, look, these are people, enormous building and considered one of the wonders of the world. So it's worth talking about. Okay, but here's these Indian, the Southern Indian trading posts and some up in the Mughal Empire as well. So Portugal, England, and the Netherlands competed for access to these Indian silk, spice, and gem trade routes. And you can see here that the Europeans, here's the different uh, the key, so you can see what these different flags mean. But the Portuguese, this sort of red shield here, and the English traded back a lot. The, the English won a lot of them from the Portuguese. 
and the Dutch had a lot of trading posts, and so did even the Danish, and the French had a lot of trading posts, and they dominated the trade in this area in order to get access to those really important luxury goods.